This is the Weather Extreme video. This is for Tuesday, the 20th of November. I'm James Spann. This is the morning edition. Alabama's weather pretty mild for Thanksgiving, but a sharp change to colder weather by the time we get to the weekend. Let's get in there and take a look. We'll check some of the Skycam shots around the network early this morning. First off, coming from Tuscaloosa, looking down on Greensboro Avenue, where some uh, clouds are in place this morning. Let's look at downtown Clanton in Chilton County and Look at the uh, view coming from Birmingham, the top of the Daniel Building. Little uh, shortwave is approaching the state this morning, and uh, that will bring a few scattered clouds around today. And by golly, look at the radar that was captured this morning at the insane hour of 516. We actually had a few echoes on radar over West Alabama, down below Tuscaloosa. Some of that probably evaporating before reaching the ground, but based on the look of that, I'm sure that some people are getting a few sprinkles, so we'll have to insert that in the forecast for today, mainly south of Interstate 20, but there's a good chance by the time you watch this, that will be gone, is because as those echoes move uh, east, the dew points are lower and lower, so uh, those are not long for this world, and uh, again, most of you, I'd say 90% of the state today will not have any issues with uh, rain. There's a look at temperatures early this morning, and you can pretty much pick out where the clouds are located. Tuscaloosa's got a pretty good overcast. They've got 46, but to the uh, north and east, the clouds are thinner. Gadsden at 39, Haleyville 37. Around the nation, I'd say those numbers are very seasonal. Nothing out of the ordinary, but that's cold for Alaska for uh, late November. Uh, Western Canada looks like the coldest number on the board there is 31 below zero Fahrenheit. That's pretty cold for uh, so early in the season for a fall morning. And we'll keep an eye on that air. And again, uh, just a little chunk of that we'll feel this weekend. Uh, the watch warning, Matt, this is good for travelers, uh, for those folks that are getting set for a big Thanksgiving trip. A large chunk of the nation is just nice and quiet. Um, the problems are back in the Pacific Northwest where there's been some flooding issues around Seattle and Portland, uh, some uh, mountain snow. In fact, a couple of counties in Montana under a blizzard warning, but a really large part of the uh, U.S. with very calm weather uh, today, tomorrow, and the Thanksgiving Day. And there's the rain for the next five days. And you can see the big numbers are back in the northwest around here, basically nothing. And this is valid through Saturday evening at 6 o'clock. We'll check the GFS, the Global Forecast System. This is valid at noon today. This is the 06Z run. Little energy swinging through here. And again, you can see the model picking up on that little, those little echoes on radar spitting out a little bit over the southern part of the state at midday today. But again, that won't amount to much. The northern county should be dry. Uh, some clouds around. We'll say a mix of sun and clouds. And the high today should be in the mid to upper 60s. There's the... Uh, Rapid refresh model, and again, you can see how it prints out just a few sprinkles to the south, but again, most of us will not get wet today. Tomorrow, nice day, upper 60s, maybe some folks touching 70, and of course, that's our travel day, the biggest travel day of the year, and it's nice to see much of the nation calm and quiet. The big problems are back in the northwest, Idaho, Washington, Oregon, northern California, where they'll see rain and some snow out there. Thanksgiving Day, we still are in great shape. A bright sunny day, and uh, by golly, we ought to be close to 70 on Thursday afternoon. Great for a little football game in the backyard or something. And Black Friday, shopping fans, a cold front coming in here. Look at the uh, northerly flow developing behind the front. And this run suggesting there could be some sprinkles down into the Tennessee Valley of North Alabama, and we might consider that. Uh, if the trend keeps up, certainly, you know, rain's not going to be a big issue and, and the air is very dry. Uh, but again, uh, if this is right on the front Friday, there might be a sprinkle or two somewhere, mainly north of Birmingham. Shouldn't be a big deal. And then Saturday, as we kick off the weekend, a deep trough over the northeast down below that is very cold over the northeast. Cold uh, flurries around up there and uh, here with a strong high. Uh, around Cross at Arkansas, that's suggesting a very breezy and cold day, I'd say. Uh, uh, the net numbers keep coming down. The latest GFS is down to 40, I'm sorry, 52 for the high. And that means for the Iron Bowl in Tuscaloosa, the kickoff temperature would be near that, near 52. You factor in that north wind, it's going to be colder. And once the sun goes down at halftime, we'll drop very quickly into the 40s. And uh, the chance will be in the 30s by the time you walk out of the stadium to you know, a, a tailgate tent or, or your car. So uh, think cold for this year's Iron Bowl, but I think that's great football weather. 
And then on Sunday, uh, we'll start the day below freezing. I think we'll be in the 20s if this is right. And uh, uh, the high Sunday afternoon in the 50s, upper 50s. So a cool and dry day. Now, next week, uh, uh, let's talk about that. This is Monday. Everybody goes back to work. And this run of the GFS is not as aggressive with this uh, early week system. Uh, down below that, some energy spins up a surface low uh, down there southeast of Dallas with uh, rain breaking out just west of here. And then Tuesday, that surface low is over South Alabama with a you know chance of rain up here. And if there's any thunderstorms or strong storms, it's going to be south of the surface low near the Gulf Coast or down in the Gulf of Mexico. But other runs have clearly been more aggressive. This is the 18Z run from yesterday. And this is valid uh, uh, around the middle of next week. This is actually the 28th of November. And it brings a very uh, dynamic long-wave trough in here. And down below that, a, a big batch of, of rain and storms. And that could be some strong storms if this is right. And then look at the cold air flooding in behind that thing. It's a 1,038 millibar high that's sitting over Denver. And again, this is the Wednesday, late Wednesday or Wednesday night of next week. So uh, the consistency is not good. But, but while the latest run looks kind of benign, that we've had other runs that suggest a chance of strong storms, maybe severe, and then a big shot of cold air coming in after that. So consistency is not good. We'll just watch for the trends. Then we'll check the end of the forecast on the 5th of December. And this is trying to bring in ridging. And if this is right, it would be relatively mild out there. But again, the model consistency has not been all that good. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this morning. We'll have notes on the blog. Next video here by 4 o'clock today. And don't forget to watch us on ABC 3340 News on the live stream or the television side at 4, 5, 6, and 10 o'clock tonight. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and God bless. Does your weatherman have a face for radio? ABC 3340's James Spann may be hair challenged, but he sure is entertaining, especially when he teams up with everyone's favorite radio duo, Rick and Bubba. From the radio airwaves to the small screen, it's the Rick and Bubba TV show five days a week. Watch Rick and Bubba along with ABC 3340 Chief Meteorologist James Spann, Monday through Friday from 6 to 10 a.m. on the Nashville Network, provided by ABC 3340.